Hello guys, my name is Yulia and me, my husband and my daughter have been living in Istanbul for one year and I cannot believe that. By the way, I already did video about Istanbul after seven months of living here. So now I'm back to tell you pros and cons of living in Istanbul. And also I'm gonna tell you some interesting features about Turkey and Istanbul in particular. And again, I'd like to tell you that it is our personal experience and it can be different than yours, okay? Well, Turkey, like any other country, has their own advantages and the same bunch of disadvantages, which, by the way, I will start with. Well, the first minus is it's really dirty outside on the streets. Droppers and plastic bottles are lying everywhere. There are not enough garbage cans and you have to look for it to throw out your garbage. Well, perhaps this is the reason. Despite the fact that I can see the garbage is very actively collected and sorted, anyway, it's still a lot somehow. The second problem is with infrastructure or pedestrian zones. For example, sidewalks, they are either cramped or crowded with the cars. So pedestrians need to go on the road, even with the strollers or with the kids. And by the way, now I'm talking about the European side of Istanbul because we live exactly here. The next one, I think it was the most negative for me for the first time. Well, when you go to the playground with the children, Everyone wants to give to your children something sweet or some, I don't know, some bands. And it's fine, like, I know you want to show him or her your love and care. First, you have to ask parents, right? And I was so angry on that because I came to the playground, someone gave Diana some sweets, but yesterday she told me that she has pain in her stomach, so I'm trying to not to give her some sweets, but now she gets some sweets, so you know. And how do you know if these children doesn't have allergies? ALLERGY FOR THAT, YOU KNOW? Well, the first thing is uh, there is no option for children's seat when you call a taxi. I mean, you go to Uber or B-Taxi and there is no this option. And children are sitting in the cars just on usual seats. And as I can see, normally they are even not belted. But by the way, adults here are not belted as well. <laughs> not fastened, I mean. So the next one is the queen, I think. <laughs> the queen of disadvantages <laughs> or the king i don't know is the traffic on the roads yes that's true and it's crazy <laughs> and also there is interesting way of driving here some turkish style of driving <laughs> but spending a lot of time in the car i think i already understand the logic and probably i can drive here <laughs> okay now the pharmacies pharmacies here works monday till saturday and they close at about six or seven, something like this. And on Sunday, it doesn't work at all. I mean, there are some open pharmacies, but you don't know which pharmacy is open exactly this Sunday, which pharmacy is on duty today. You have to go to the nearest pharmacy to your home or to your location. And then there will be a list with the nearest pharmacies, which are open this Saturday. And the next Saturday, it will be different pharmacies. Oh yeah. The next huge minus is Turkish Lira. I'm so sad about it and I even don't want to talk about this. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that's a big problem because prices for everything here grows every day. If not every day, but every week for sure. And it becomes really expensive to live here, really. Then one more disadvantage, but it's for me because I'm not a smoker. Here they smoke everywhere. It's not a problem for me if it's outside, but some people smoke even in the car when you're sitting next to him or in some closed place. And after my hair, my clothes, my everything smells like this. But again, this is disadvantages only for not smokers, I think. And could you please tell me, guys, why is it so hot every time in metro station? But I even can say this is disadvantages. It is just things that we paid attention with. But advantages of this country for us cover all disadvantages. So let's check the positive side. By the way, if you checked my first video about Istanbul, I think you will not find something new in, in that what I'm gonna tell you now. But if in short, so the first, again, it will be the people cheerful and friendly people here 
and again I'd like to tell that not 100% of population are like this kind and cheerful and blah blah but I'm talking about the people who I meet and the most people of them are that kind of people nice cheerful helpful well for example once I came to the playground with Diana after my shooting and I was tired and probably my mood was not that good and I came to this playground with my Slavic dissatisfied face and one mom from this playground we didn't speak with her before she came to me and asked like what happened? why are you so sad? is everything okay? and then I said oh yes it's fine blah blah we started to talk and after my mood was much better I think I'm just so lucky for the people in my life and imagine, even in Goch we met nice people. Yes, not in every Goch, because we visit three. And in the one, they were nice. There are open people who are ready to help. For example, once I was waiting for the letter from Google and they sent this letter without any ab availability, ability, ability, without the ability. Ability? Okay, so I could not be able to track it. So I had no track number or something. So I just need to wait. And I came to the post office like every week and I'm asking when is there is something for me? They say no, no. Then they said me like you can go to the sorting post center and probably they can help you. Well I came to this to this post sorting center and almost no one spoke English there. But there was some guy who was sitting on the reception. He was like a security guard there. And I don't know, without any English he understood my problem. I came with these eyes like this, I don't know where to go to and who asked to about my letter. He saw my eyes and asked Google. I said Google. <laughs> he took my hands and said let's go. And we started to go to each office and he asked everyone like who is the postman of this area. He found my postman. He introduced me to postman of our district. <laughs> We changed numbers and this postman said like if I will get something for you I will let you know via WhatsApp and one week later I got this letter so can you imagine I think if this security guard will not help me I would not get this letter at all also it's a very hospitable nation I think you know it I think everyone knows it everyone whenever you go they will offer you tea or coffee or some sweets or they want to share something with you and now we got new friends from Istanbul and they always want to show us the city and cook some Turkish food and treat us that is so nice they want to treat you every time and even now I'm in the studio in Ankara and we already had our lunch and I already ate a dessert but after they bring me this cake and say please eat, please, what do you want? do you want coffee, tea, water or something? here we have box with snacks so if you want something just let us know and now let's go, I will show you our office <laughs> and yes I know these are just few examples but Anyway, I meet this kind of friendly and helpful people very often in Turkey, so that's why I'm talking about it. Okay, for us, as a parents with a child, it's an important fact that here people love children so much. I already told you about this. But not only adult people love children. When you... not... No way! Hi! No way! <laughs> I'm vlogging again! <laughs> oh god, it's impossible to meet someone in Istanbul! I thought so, but no. I met a girl which we had shooting with in Bodrum, by the way. Oh yeah. So talking about the children. So when you come to the playground, you can even relax a little bit, because even children who is older, they love to take care and play with babies. Next huge advantage is, of course, Turkish cuisine. By the way, I already did video about Turkish cuisine, you can check it. For sure, I think Turkish cuisine is one of the tastiest in the world. It's just meat, vegetables, meat, bread, meat again, just perfect. Also huge advantage is fresh fruits and vegetables are available for you whole year. Also I like that economy here is based on uh, small businesses and often their family ones. And then of course it's incredibly beautiful city which never stops surprise you and I saw just a small part of it. 
I didn't see a lot still. Also, here is nice climate. I think it's close to perfect for me. Summer is too hot for me. I'm just sweating. It's really boiling summer here. Therefore, another advantage of Istanbul is availability of beaches here. Winter time is very warm. So, I mean, for winter it's warm. The coldest day, I remember it was minus five or something. As I remember, maybe I'm wrong. I think the autumn is the perfect time. So right now it's 5th of October and it's just perfect. I'm walking in my t-shirt, it's not hot. It's already fresh air, but it's nice. Winter time, there are snow a little bit. For us, it's really a little bit. Warm spring starts from April, I think. So you can go out without extra jackets. <gasps> Look, it's a rainbow here. Oh, and by the way, in my first video about Istanbul, I told about the special attitude to the cats. And now it's normal for us. We are also trying to take care of them. We even have one regular guest, a cat, who comes to our apartment when we're starting to cook something. And Diana every time asks us to give her food to her to feed the cat. <laughs> and now some interesting facts about Turkey. First, Turkish breakfast. So if you have never tried Turkish breakfast, you definitely need to try it. Turkish breakfast calls kahvaltı and you can see it everywhere. It normally consists with eggs. It could be omelette, it could be menemen, it's like a Turkish omelette with uh, tomatoes and pepper. Then it could be just boiled eggs, then a few types of cheese, olives, like some salad, several types of bread, so it could be simit, it could be some croissant or some layer cake or just normal bread. And also there are several sauces. You just need to try it, okay? Okay, one interesting detail which I find so nice is when you're greeting or saying goodbye to a person who is currently in working process now, for example, to a caretaker or to a butcher or to a waiter or to film crew, or even someone is washing his own car right now, you can say kolay gelsin, which means easy job or I wish you easy job. It's so cute, right? There is also a custom to give a small amount of money to the children. One more thing that cute kids or pets here, they call fistic, which literally translates as peanut. And by the way, I didn't know that football is so popular here. There are a lot of football clubs here and so for example today Besiktas team plays with some other team, I don't know the name. And now I am exactly at Besiktas area. Sasha also plays football, so Diana and I also became a fans. So the people here are really like to go for a picnic to some parks or to some picnic areas or to some embankment. And it seems like almost everyone here has these folding chairs with which they go for a walk, take some food, some soft drinks or maybe not soft drinks and sit and enjoy. Then many dishes here are called by the name of the city which are they found in. For example, Adana Kebab, Bursa Iskander Kebab, Sariyar Borekci. So the next, I don't know how it's called here, but it's similar to a wake, I guess. If some person has recently died, his relatives bring some food outside and give it to the people on the street. It doesn't matter if you know or you don't know this person, and first time we were surprised because we were walking around next to our home and some young guy came to us and gave us drooms and sweets and said like, please take it, please take it. But then he explained us what is it. And one day one lady bring the food to the playground to the children and to their parents. The next interesting detail is they say afiat olsun, which means bon appetit, even when you finished your food, you leave the table, I mean, and you said, okay, like, I'm done, thank you. And they say, Afiat <laughs> Olsun, like, okay, then thank you. And I have little update about Afiat Olsun. Now I understood why they say Afiat Olsun after you finish your food. Because Afiat Olsun, yes, it translates like uh, Bon Appetit, but literally it translates like it's for your health or be healthy, like we have Nazdarovye in Russian. 
Then very cute feature is that they call each other Abi and Abla, which means like a brother or sister, older brother or older sister. For example, if, if they don't know each other on the street, they can ask like, hey sister, where is this market? Or hey brother, could you please help me to find this place, blah, blah. I think that's cute. <laughs> Often you can find here residential complexes with the swim pool in the courtyard. It's called Sita, as I remember. I think it's just perfect, especially summertime, right? Then often a lot of houses here are built such a way that you have to climb up to get the entrance and to go inside. And this entrance floor is called not the first floor, it calls zero floor or entrance floor or Girishkat in Turkish. And also there is minus first floor, which is also residential one. And it calls basement floor or kot bir in Turkish, as I understand it right. By the way, numbers of buildings here are supplemented by some name to it. For example, if you have building number five, and also it has its own name. For example, it's Esen apartment. And Esen here is a Turkish name. Or it can be Günaydın apartment. <laughs> which I loved so much because Gnaiden translates is like good morning so you have good morning apartment <laughs> here they love bread so much just like me and if you order some food they will put a lot of bread with it and also very often you can see that water sells here not in usual bottles but in cups like this by the way here they put mint inside to the salads and even soups that is so interesting because normally I put it in chai, in, in tea or in, I don't know, lemonade or in some drinks, you know? Okay, and now a little bit similar and opposite sides with the Russian culture. For example, in Russia we say to call the cat and here they say psi psi. Psi psi, psi psi psi psi, psi psi psi psi psi. And we have similar ksh ksh to say like go out. Ksh ksh. Ah! Then we have a lot of words which are similar in pronunciation and in the meanings in, with Russian. For example, chai, then shapka, kapshon, then what else? Kushak, but we don't use kushak at all. It's like an old word, but anyway. We have word taburet, which means tabure or tabure. <laughs> we have uchug, here it's uchug. Then we have samavar, kind of similar with samavar, right? By the way, Semaver here is a, it's like a two components kettle. The first one, the smaller one, is for especially for chai, for tea. And the second one is for boiling water. And you can find it very often here. Oh, I remember one more word similar is kapris. Kapris is kapris, right? And also we have the same word ananas. <laughs> In Russia, when you work too much, like extra hours and you cannot stop working, we say like you work as a horse, but here they say you work as a dog. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> here I have a little update about the dogs. So also if you're a hard worker person, they can say like you're working as a bee. And it's already logical for me. <laughs> By the way, when you call someone, you say, Alo. It's totally the same in Russia. Alo. <laughs> Alo. Alo. Hello. When we are playing with the newborn, we say like cuckoo, cuckoo, and here they say GA. <laughs> Funny detail that they call all the type of instant coffee here as a Nescafe. And it doesn't matter if this coffee has another brand mark, it will be just Nescafe. And they also treat you like, what would you like to drink? Tea, Turkish coffee or Nescafe? <laughs> And we have the same strange thing in Russia because we call all the diapers like a pampers. And it doesn't matter if it's Huggies or Mary's, it will be pampers. <laughs> Here, as I already told, if you have unhappy face, someone will come to you and ask what's wrong, why are you with unhappy face? And I just need to explain it, it's my normal face. Unhappy face is my normal face, it's Russian face, you know? Also here they say ponchik to describe something cute. And in Russia, we say pontik to someone who is big or overweight, like my cat. Ben turçe bilmiyorum, but I will help you. <laughs> they asked me to make a picture. Tamam, I guess, I don't know. Bu iyi mi? İyi, çok güzel. 
Sen çok güzel. <gülüyor> well, yeah, it was a short description of Istanbul through our eyes. I'm sure you can tell a lot of interesting things about Istanbul and Turkey. Maybe after a while I will make part three. I don't know. And we are so grateful to Turkey for its hospitality. Whoever we meet here, they were so kind to us. And we in turn remember that we are guests here, are trying to follow customs of Turkey and just enjoying this place, the culture, the people and the food. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it, yes, and like it, no. Bye!